Don! Hey! Don's so... What a In West Hollywood, two old friends, Don Kilhefner and Anthony Friedkin, reunite. I even have the camera that I shot all the oh photos with. This was the camera. This That's baby great. was the one that did it all. Right the camera here. that set them on a journey together decades ago. All gathered this night in honor of Kil Hefner and other pioneering gay rights activists. Wow, all right. Placed at the center of the mural are Don Kil Hefner with Morris Kite to his left, founders of the Gay Liberation Front in Los Angeles, a photograph taken by Friedkin at the dawn of the gay liberation movement. It was 1969, a time when no one was producing murals in honor of gay life. But a societal shift was taking place. It was really about saying, no, we won't accept this anymore. In cities across America, gay people were fighting back, something that wasn't lost on 19-year-old Anthony Friedkin. There's something that is referred to as the concerned photographer. And the idea is that you celebrate humanity for its good things, but you also identify the things that need to be reevaluated and changed. What Friedkin saw needing change was attitudes toward homosexuality. I thought it was horrible the way gay people were treated by our society. It made me angry. Friedkin grew up in Los Angeles. His father was a screenwriter. His mother was a dancer, choreographer. They had tons of friends who were gay. He had been around gay people all of his life, so it didn't seem strange to him. They expressed themselves in a free way with love and affection and humor. So, you know, I wanted to try to record that, you know, just out of the dignity that I thought they deserved that many people wouldn't give them. So Friedkin sought out Kite and Kil Hefner, who had just founded the Gay Community Services Center in Los Angeles. They gave him access to a world that was just emerging from the shadows. He comes across as real. And at that time, as a young man, you know, he was on fire. He was on fire with creativity. He saw things that other people didn't see. Friedkin dedicated two years capturing and printing the most powerful images possible. It was not unusual at that time for cars with uh, four or five young people in it with baseball bats to stop a gay person on the street and beat them senseless. So it was dangerous even associating with gay people at that time. What Tony did was he ventured into this dangerous space and he took his photographs. But the photographs were ahead of their time and most galleries wouldn't show them until now. The culmination of Friedkin's vision took 45 years, but it's now being realized at the de Young Museum in San Francisco. The exhibit, titled The Gay Essay, is under the direction of chief photography curator Julian Cox. Julian, this looks fantastic. Oh my god, look at this. Oh, wow. This guy can play like a halfback. There's so much of the gay essay in his spirit. Anthony's whole approach to what he does is very immersive. He really believed that, that to make good work, you had to be deeply connected to your subject. I really believe that the print is such an important part of the art form of photography. Jim was such an extraordinary young man. You know, he was Chicano, and he lived in a hardcore gang-infested area. And to be gay in that kind of a community and to come out openly that way and walk around the neighborhood. What do you see in those eyes. There's a curiosity in his eyes about what his future might be like, what the path that he's chosen to go down. And this is Troy Perry yeah, here, that's I think, Troy right? Perry. Yes. He founded the Metropolitan Community Church, Correct. right? Yeah. This was a very dark, tragic day. His church was burnt down. Look in his eyes. He's defiant. He's saying, you know, I'm here to take you on. It was that new gay liberation spirit. We were demanding it. You take your freedom. And it was that audacious attitude that was the uh, climate of the times. And Tony caught that. Ah, uh, divine. The <laughs> one and only. Yes. Oh my God, that was such a, this was such an incredible experience. And she was with the Cockettes. The Cockettes, I didn't yes. Know that. When Friedkin heard about San Francisco's wildly popular Cockettes, he couldn't get to North Beach fast enough to film behind the scenes. Like now, North Beach was a bustling neighborhood and home to some of the first gay bars and nightclubs in San Francisco. The ensemble cast of the Coquettes and Divine and the energy and the way they, they did their musical numbers around Edgar Allan Poe and Mask of the Red Death. <laughs> yeah. And it was just fantastic, yeah. you know. Their images also now captured for all time in a book just published by Yale University Press. Oh, that's great. Oh my God, look at those two characters.
He humanized it. When I was looking again at the photograph of Morris Kite and myself, a tear came to my eye. <laughs> Those were very difficult days for gay people. There was, there was the amount of oppression that we faced everywhere uh, was tremendous. You have to put it in a historical context. Hal Fisher was a photography critic for Art Week and Art Forum in the 70s and is the author of two books on gay culture. We have a lot of people in that period that were doing documentation of what was happening in the gay movement. But Anthony Friedkin's work goes beyond documentation. It's art. Over time, gay imagery in the arts has evolved in response to events shaping the gay community with photographers like Nan Golden and Catherine Opie and Peter Hujar. Without doubt, the AIDS epidemic totally informed and generated really powerful imagery. And some very important artists who had AIDS, and I think specifically David Wanarovitz. Images by young contemporary photographers like Ryan McGinley reflect a newfound freedom in LGBT life. But it's freedom that came at, at a cost. A price Friedkin was willing to pay. This camera has so many of those private special moments that it was a witness to. If anything happened to this camera, I God, I don't know what I'd do. I really don't know what I'd do. Still a purist shooting black and white film with his Leica. Still committed to capturing that decisive moment, like in his recent Wave series, exhibited at the High Museum in Atlanta, and still pushing the limits. I actually started surfing right around the same time I started photographing. There's a parallel about what they call going for it in surfing, where you absolutely just abandon all sense of safety, and you just hope to God that you're going to make it. I think the risk that we take as artists is critical to our ability to do interesting work and how much risk we're willing to take.